Good evening. Uh, have you announced the repopulation of a portion of the Getty Fire? With us today is the incident commander, Assistant Chief Corey Rhodes. Good evening, everybody. On behalf of the Fire Chief, Chief Rosas, um, and our local uh, city council here, and uh, you know the governor, and so many people have been here helping us. Uh, I want to officially announce the. Uh, reopening of uh, some of the areas here. So effective October 30th at 5 p.m. this evening, all mandatory evacuation orders and warnings are lifted with the exception of the areas between west border of Kinter Avenue, south border of Sunset Boulevard, north border area just south of Mountain Gate Drive, and east border area adjacent to the 405 freeway and over the boulevard. And if we couldn't have done this in such a fast manner if it wasn't for the help of our local government, our federal partners, our state, OES, Cal Fire, and everyone that's come in here to really help us. We started early, early mornings a few days ago and got it fast and hard. A lot of our charging down. We put numerous people on the fire line here and we were able to put this to rest. So I'm happy to announce that uh, we're going to be able to get some people back in their homes. We still have a, a mandatory evacuation in order and we're going to reevaluate that uh, tomorrow morning. So, with that, any questions? How many people were evacuated uh, to begin with and how many people are going to be able to? Um, I think that number is about, go ahead, you know, I think it's about 16,000, but go ahead. In, in total, we had uh, just over 20,000 people uh, that were evacuated. We had a total of 10,000 residents. Uh, some of those are commercials that were affected by this mandatory evacuation. So, so how many will be still not able to return to their homes? Do we know? Uh, a few hundred. The, the area that we're looking at is... is not, uh, it's mostly residential and uh, some of it is uh, urban wildland interface. So, uh, to speak to specific numbers, it'd be difficult without counting the exact number of residences. It was it's much easier when we had a larger population. But when you w talk about that wildland urban interface and the residences, it's very difficult to be able to pinpoint without actually counting those number of homes and knowing how many families reside in those residences. But you're talking a very small number uh, in comparison to the 20,000 people that were affected with the mandatory evacuation. So Chief, one of the issues in those particular areas that prevents you from allowing those folks back in just yet, what, what, what's happening to them? There's still some open line where we don't have full containment on the southern border right there. And we have a number of our firefighters and resources in and out of there throughout uh, the evening and throughout tomorrow morning. So once we put our folks in, in there tonight and get uh, more containment on the southern edge of the fire, we'll reel about like that in the morning, and most likely we'll be able to open up uh, some of that area tomorrow morning once we once we ground through this full containment on that southern border. Does it also depend on if it's still windy tomorrow? Wind yeah. has something to do with it, but uh, we've been, we have a meteorologist right here on site, and uh, what he's told us is what you see is, is going to kind of maintain itself. It's not going to get any worse, maintained throughout tomorrow, tomorrow evening. So, you know, we're looking at ground truth, and we don't think there's going to be increase in fire behavior. We feel pretty confident right now. And can either of you answer uh, about the um, escorts for medicine or pets? Is that, that's been ongoing all day. How does that work exactly? Uh, well, we have escorts. We have LAPD because we work with them in the evacuation. We get uh, people come up with their addresses where they have medicine and pets. We'll, we'll have uh, LAPD escorts that will actually go in specific areas with fire resources are in there to ensure for the safety to get the specific medicines in. Uh, I'll just make this as an announcement. Uh, we had a uh, funeral actually that took place in the, uh, the mandatory evacuation area um, and we worked with LAPD and with, with fire and local officials and were able to work together with, with the church and actually have this funeral take place today in the mandatory evacuation area. We thought that was very important to take care of and we're able to do that. Wow. Okay. Was that at a particular establishment, a church or anything? It was a church on Sensor Boulevard right here in the mandatory evacuation area. What was the church called? I can't, I can't remember. I'll, I'll get it for you. Okay. Anything else, John? No, just how many uh, people are, are not able to go back in, do you think, tonight? Or how many homes? It's a guess. I mean, I could guess probably. I'll give you a percentage. So I'm percentage-wise, we're looking at about 85 to 90 percent of the people able to go back into their homes with that just a small remainder left over. Hundreds? Dozens? Hard to say, huh? It's really hard to say. Okay. All right, everybody. If, if
I give you one more one more thing? I know one of the things the fire chief really emphasized throughout this fire uh, was the use of technology and how that technology assisted the incident commander and uh, the operations section in making their decisions uh, with regards to evacuation, looking at fire modeling from previous fires. Um, so we really talked about uh, a lot how how important technology was. In that same uh, arena, if your viewers will look at LAFD.org and click on news, it will give them a map, very similar to the map behind Chief Rose, and they can type in their address, and that address will actually show them whether or not they are in the mandatory evacuation area or in the area that has been lifted. So they can just type in their, name, their address, and it will tell them if they can go home or if they still have to be evacuated. That's new, huh, Brandon? We're always working on technology and we're looking to use the, the leverage to make things better. Makes everyone's job easier. Okay. Thank Thanks you. a lot. Appreciate it. Thank, Thank you very much.